Hi, it's time for another math easy solution uh, to discuss further into polar coordinates and now continue further on example 9 uh, that looks at the uh, cardioid shape or heart shape uh, that's Greek for heart and now look at part 3 which looks at question B of this example and a recall from part A uh, or question A. The question is basically for the cardioid R equals 1 plus sine theta of example 7. Find the slope of the tangent line where theta equals to pi over 3. That, that was my last video. And then part B. Now we were going to look at this question in this video. Find the points on the cardioid where the tangent line is horizontal or vertical. And here's just a recap from parts 1 and 2. Here's the cardioid shape, which is the r equals 1 plus sine theta in polar coordinate form. Now here's the point r and, uh, and theta like that. And in uh, question, yeah, in part 1, I, I went over the dy over dx formula and showed that it's equal to this. That's just the slope of the tangent line. And then part a, that's when theta equals to pi over 3, or about 60, yeah, that's 60 degrees. So if you have it here, theta equals to pi over 3, I showed in my earlier video in part 2 that dy over dx at theta equals to pi over 3 equals to, well, negative 1. It was just a negative 1 slope like that. So now let's look at uh, over here. When the tangent line is horizontal or vertical, as you can see, we should have some vertical asymptotes. Uh, yeah, and the polar part here, I mean in the pole at the origin, uh, we should have some horizontal ones across here. It's a horizontal tangent. So, and then there's one above here, and there should be a vertical one across there, etc. And on the left side as well. So let's just do this all mathematically, and then we'll visually draw them later in this video. Yes, yeah, so the first thing I want to note is, well, recall that the formula in uh, parametric form, this is dy over dx equals this, but when you write y and x as uh, parameters, I mean, as theta as a parameter of y and x, just as in part one, this is the same thing as uh, writing dy over d theta over dx over d theta. Like this, using parametric calculus. So if we want to get horizontal or vertical asymptotes, yeah, what we want for a horizontal asymptote, so I'll write b, horizontal asymptote or tangent, horizontal tangent. So for, in order for this to happen, we need, well, dy over dx equals to 0. Or the rise of a run is just not rising. So you just have a flat line like that. And then vertical tangents, on the other hand, I'll just write it over across here. So vertical tangents, what we want, vertical tangents, it's when you have the slope goes to infinity, plus or minus. So dy over dx, uh, this approaches plus or minus. Uh, infinity, or you could write equals to, let's write equals to, plus or minus infinity. In other words, it's rising infinitely high, like this. Yeah, so the cases we need to look at is when basically for horizontal tangents, we need the dy over d theta, that's this top part. If this equals to zero, then well, what we have is this equals to zero. That's if this bottom part's not equal to zero, which I will show in a bit. So dy over d theta, that's this top part, cosine theta, 1 plus 2 sine theta, this equals to 0. Or uh, this equals 0, yeah, we have to find out when it equals to 0, and that is when this part equals to 0, or this equals to 0. So the cases for that is, well, we need to find these theta values. So cos theta equals 0, and this 1 plus 2 sine theta equals to 0. Rearrange this, we have, move this over, we have a negative 1, then divided by 2, we have theta, sine theta equals to 1, then divided by 2. So sine theta equals to uh, negative 1 over 2. Yeah, so let's find these values, and you can, well, uh, recall the uh, the graph for cosine looks something like this. I'm going to draw this theta, and I'll write this as yeah, let's write this as cosine theta for the y-axis. And now, note it just looks something like this, and it just keeps repeating, etc. Yeah, but I'm just going to draw it for uh, for the positive side here from 0 to 2 pi. And this is because, note that uh, this is the, the cardioid from example 7. See, the cardioid 
Yeah, so cardioid from example seven repeats itself uh, beyond, uh, whenever we go beyond uh, from zero to uh, two pi. So anywhere after this, all, all we do is go in a circle. So we go from here, if this is theta equals zero initially, and as you rotate, eventually you get to two pi, then we get the points here again, and we're just gonna keep rotating across this entire shape etc. So make sure to watch example 7 in the video link below. Yeah, so I'm only going to look for points when cosine theta is equal to 0 in this uh, domain over here because everything else just repeats. So we need to make, uh, yeah, find the points that is equal to 0. Well, we know that this one, recall, that's just pi over 2. And then this is pi, so this is difference pi over 2. Pi plus pi over 2, that's just going to be over here. That's just 3 pi over 2 and you can just uh, look at this one. Pi is the same thing as equal to, uh, yeah, pi is just 2 pi divided by 2 plus pi over 2, that's just 3 pi over 2, like that. Yeah, so we have uh, two points across there. Yeah, so the next one we need to look at is this sine theta equals to negative 1 over 2. So let's draw a uh, sine curve. So we have like this, and I'll draw this again from, uh, yeah, from 0 to 2 pi. So this is going to be sine theta. Just recall, it looks something like this. And just starts repeating, actually, after this part here, this is 2 pi. And what we want is, remember, this is 1. It goes all the way down to negative 1 and repeats and goes backwards as well. And what we want is when it equals to negative 1 over 2. So it's going to be somewhere over here. If this is negative 1 over 2, you draw a dashed line across it we're gonna get all the way here and here. And this, this line here is pi, so it has to be greater than pi, and it's these two points across. And now since it's uh, a one over two, we could find this, uh, we could just use uh, our memory from it, or what we could do is recall the exact trig ratio. I'll write it, ignore that line. So recall, uh, just using an isosceles triangle, this is, what I always draw. So if this is a isosceles triangle, each side is two. Then what we have is this is going to be pi over three because everything needs to add up to pi or 180 degrees. And then if you split this down the middle, split this it's going to be one one across like that. This is going to be splitting these angles into two. This is going to be pi over six. It's going to be pi over six. So now we have this one and two there. That's what. We have it, and number sine is opposite over uh, hypotenuse. So then sine right here, yes, yeah, sine of pi over six equals to one over two, like that. Yeah, so that's what we have, and notice here, if it, this is one over two, that's gonna be across to here, and that's gonna be over here. This is pi over six. And then this one is going to be by symmetry is actually just pi minus pi over 6. So what we could do is just add pi over 6 to pi over here to get uh, 7 pi over 6. And I'll show you here and also over here is going to be 2 pi minus pi. Just to show you that, what we could do is, uh, just to show you in more detail, yeah, because what we have is an angle like this. This is going to be negative 1. And uh, yes, that's going down negative 1. This is going to be pi over 6. The hypotenuse is 2. Yeah, so then we have this sine pi over 6 equals to negative 1 over 2. So then, but this angle, all it is, is rotated all the way across here. And this is going to be, uh, I'll just draw it over here, 2 pi with the full 360 degrees minus pi over 6. That equals 2. Let's multiply by 6 over 6. So we have the common denominator. So we have 12 pi, or 12 minus 1, pi, uh, and then this is going to be over 6 equals to 11 pi over 6, like that. And that's actually this angle over here by symmetry. We could have already just uh, subtracted it. So 11 pi over 6, and the, the 7 pi over 6, uh, basically if you draw it over on this quadrant, that same exact relative angle across here as pi over 6. We still have a negative 1, and then hypotenuse 2. I'll extend this further out just to make it a bit better viewing. But, but yeah, so negative one like that. And then this angle across here, or actually that's just pi, or this angle across, that's just going to be pi plus pi over six times by six over six. 
that's just 7 pi over 6 like that and that's when it's at this point and this point yeah so thus what we have is so thus we have uh, dy over d theta equals to 0 at theta equals 2 and I'll just uh, put these in first this is going to be actually I'll put the other ones first scroll up we have pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 that's one cosine 0 over here so we have pi over 2 3 pi over 2 and also what we have is this point are um, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 this is one sine uh, or 1 plus 2 sine theta equals to 0 so that's that's at these uh, periods and now the next thing I'm going to do is find when dx over d theta equals to 0 so we set that equal to 0 I'll just write this one down the bot this is the denominator of the dy over dx formula and that's one because we want the bottom one to be equal to 0 so that we have a o, or number dy over d theta over 0 so it goes to infinity like that so that is what we want and let's just look at this one so that's 1 plus sine theta and then 1 minus 2 sine theta that's dx over d theta so what we have is, is 1 plus yeah 1 plus sine theta times it by 1 minus 2 sine theta so if we set this equal to 0 what we have is well this needs to be equal to 0 or we can have this uh, part equaling to 0 so in other words you could just move this around so we have sine theta equals to negative 1 or we have this and move it over we have sine theta equals to move this negative 1 on the other side it's going to be negative 1 divided by negative 2 that's just equals to 1 over 2 like that and this one we already actually have solved this part this is at theta equals to and we could just use by symmetry this is theta equals to pi over 6 that equals to the 1 over 2 right here pi over 6 that is this point here and then by symmetry because remember this is just uh, subtracted by that and again by symmetry this point across there is going to be pi minus pi over 6 so again just to save time and then we have this equals to 5 pi over 6 and I'll just write that uh, down yeah I'll just write that over here so that's just 5 pi over 6 so that was, that was just to save some time this is 5 pi over 6 and yeah so the next one is this sine equals to negative 1 well we could again scroll over here it has to equal to negative 1 that's just at this point across here and at this point uh, recall this is pi over 2 all we do is yeah by symmetry if this is the top is recall that's pi over 2 this one here add pi this is just well 3 pi over 2 and that is in fact the exact uh, point where this is equal to 0 so that's the thing we need to take into account I'll show you we need to use the Hopitel's rule this is at uh, theta equals 2 pi or uh, 3 pi over 2 yeah so now we have these three points but now notice what we have there's a pi over 2 3 pi over 2 there's 7 pi over 6 11 pi over 6 and these points we need to look at this one and this one this is the exact same thing there so what we end up having is a dy over dx which again remember equals to dy over d theta over dx over d theta equals to well 0 over 0 uh, at uh, theta equals to 3 pi over 2 which is undefined so we can't just do this uh, like that so we kn we're not sure if it's gonna go to 0 or it's let's say it's approaching 0 over 0 yeah so we don't know if it's approaching at 0 at the bottom faster than at the top and then it, otherwise it would go to infinity or it's going to 0 faster on the top than the bottom so it's going to 0 so we need to find out where it is yeah so what we will do is well let's look at the limit so uh, limit as what I'm gonna do is theta is approaching uh, 3 pi over 2 from the left side by putting this negative sign there because the reason is 
we're going to be approaching this. So for the sine, it's going to be minus and a minus uh, when it's approaching this from the left side. So it's the same as the right side. But the only difference is from here. When we're approaching 3 pi over 2 for the cosine function, we're going to get a, well, negative here. But if we're approaching from this side, we get a positive. So it matters where we're approaching the cosine. And the only parts where it's equaling to 0 is, well, over here, cosine theta is approaching 0. And then also that uh, sine, uh, this 1 plus sine theta is approaching 0, because that's the same thing as sine theta equals to negative 1. So what I'm going to do is try to isolate them. So if we write this uh, limit as theta approaches 3 pi over 2 uh, from the left side, we have this theta divided by dx over d theta equals 2. Yeah, this whole thing equals 2 the limit as theta approaches 3 pi over 2 from the left side. I'm going to plug these ones in. So the formulas were, you know, were let's just uh, recall those. So we have this one. That's the bottom. And the top one is, let me just refresh, cosine theta, 1 plus 2 sine theta, like that. Whoops. So let's write that down. This is going to be uh, cosine theta, 1 plus 2 sine theta, like that. And then over, uh, this is 1 plus sine theta, 1 minus 2 sine theta, like that. So what we're going to do is isolate these two because yeah, these are the ones that approach 0. This one is approaching 0 at this uh, uh, 3 pi over 2. So then when we isolate them, then we could just uh, do La Hopital's rule. And we'll get to that in a bit. And then this one, we could just plug these inside this one, because ones, these ones aren't 0. This one's not 0, so we could divide those up. So what I'm going to do is separate this using the limit properties. So I'm going to put a giant bracket limit as theta approaches 3 pi over 2 from the left side. I'm going to separate these. Uh, ones over here. So 1 plus 2 sine theta, like that, over 1 minus 2 sine theta, like that. And then times this by limit as theta approaches 3 pi over 2 from the left side. And I plug in the cosine, cosine theta over this 1 plus sine theta, like that. So now what we end up having is, yeah, what we end up having is this part right here. Well, this equals two. We could just plug those inside. So when we plug in three pi over two into sine theta, well, we already know that value. If we just recall the graph, that's just negative one there. So we could just plug in the negative one inside. So we have this equals to one plus two times negative one over one minus two times negative one. What we end up having is this. 1 plus, or I'll put it down here, uh, save some time, or save some, save some space, equals to 1 minus 2 over 1 minus, that becomes a plus, there's two minuses, plus 2 equals to negative 1 over 3. So that approaches, uh, yeah, that, that equals to one, negative 1 over 3. But now this part here, because cosine theta is equal to 0 at 3 pi over 2, so we have a 0 over 0 like that. So that's the case. We have 0 over 0. So what we could do is drag this over here. And I'm going to say is recall uh, Le Hapitel's rule. And I'll put the uh, video on this uh, in my earlier videos. I'll put that in, in the video description below. So recall Le Hapitel's or Le Hospital's rule. I think it's pronounced Le Hapitel's rule. And what we could do is, well, we could take the derivative. Because we have a 0 over 0, the limit as theta approaches this 3 pi over 2 from the left side of cosine theta over 1 plus sine theta. So what we could do is, by the Le Hapital's rule, is take the derivative of the top and bottom because it's a 0, uh, zero over 0 or infinity over infinity. So now what we have is this d over d theta. I'll take the der derivative in terms of theta because that's the parameter in here. Cosine theta, so the derivative of this divided by the derivative d over d theta of, of 1 plus sine theta, like that. Now the derivative, that just equals to if cosine theta, recall 
I'll first write this down. This is a bit tedious. So 3 pi over 2, negative 1. The derivative of cosine theta, recall that's just sine theta divided by this one, 1 plus sine theta, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of sine theta is just cosine theta. And now here is the tricky part because we're going from the left side. Well, we know that the sine theta, that equals to negative 1 from either side that you approach it. Let's just go back over here. So for the sine, that's 3 pi over 2. If you go from the left side or left, or left side or right side, we get the negative 1 over here. But the tricky part is for this cosine theta. If you approach it from the left side, we get this negative number. Because remember, we never actually reach 0 when we're taking a limit. So what we end up having is a negative 0 0.00000, etc. So it's still negative. And then from the right side, it's going to be positive. So we have to take into account that negative sign. So let's go back over here. So this equals 2. The top part's going to be negative, negative 1, divided by 0 from the left side. I'll put the negative on top there. So because it's from the left side, this becomes positive on the top part. This equals 2. Well, plus 1 over negative 0. <laughs> or uh, it's approaching negative 0 from the uh, left side. Again, I'll put this uh, sign like this. So this means this is, this is approaching, I'll put the yes, from the left side, this is approaching 1 over a negative infinity. <laughs> Whoops, oh, I got that wrong. This is going to approach negative infinity. Like that. Yeah, so I got that mixed up. So now, now that it's because negative infinity, so we have this part, and then we could throw this back in there and multiply that out by the first part here, negative 1 over 3. So what we end up having is, I'll write this fully out limit as theta approaches 3 pi over uh, 3 pi over 2 from the left side of dy over dx equals 2. Yeah, equals to negative 1 over 3 times it by negative infinity. This is going to be, well, negative infinity times this. All that changes is the negatives become positive. And negative 1 over 3, uh, yeah, 1 over 3 times infinity is just infinity. So this becomes positive infinity like that. And now what we could do is, well, for the other part from the right side, so by symmetry, or we could just uh, basically, by the logic we had there, just all, only thing that's going to change is this 0 is approaching from the right side, and this is going to be positive. So by symmetry, limit as theta approaches 3 pi over 2 from the positive side of dy over dx, this is going to equal to negative infinity. And by symmetries, if you look at the, uh, the cardioid, how it looks like, uh, 3 pi over 2, remember, that's just the uh, third part here. So that's a full length across. That's at the pole. So if, th if this is going to infinity, positive, the, the other side's going to be on the negative side going down, downwards. This is uh, just at a point there. But by symmetry, or just by uh, following exactly what I did, but this side's going to be from the positive side. It's uh, If it's from the positive side, what we have is plus 1 over uh, 0 from the right side. Uh, and then this is going to be, well, just infinity, because there's only pluses there. And then when you infinity times this negative 1 over 3, that becomes negative infinity, like this over here. So thus what we have is even though the top part dy over d theta equals to 0, it's still a vertical tangent at the pole. So vertical tangent at uh, the pole or the origin, like that, because of the 3 pi over 2. Yeah, so thus what we have now is thus uh, horizontal tangents are at the points, horizontal tangents. Now we, we remove the 3 pi over 2 because that's going to be a vertical tangent. So let's go all the way back up to the uh, horizontal tangents. So, so we exclude this one, that's going to be a vertical one. So pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6, like that. So uh, horizontal tangents at theta equals 2 pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. And now the points here are, well, r equals 2 at these points, 1 plus sine, because remember r is just 1 plus sine theta. Now for 1 plus sine uh, pi over 2, uh, pi over 2, remember, that's just uh, 1. Let's just scroll up. So pi over 2 is just 1. 
and you can see that over here. So pi over 2, that's just 1, and then the other parts, 7 pi, you have this negative 1 over 2, as uh, showed above. So let's just put that down. So sine pi over 2, this is going to be 1 plus 1 equals to 2, and then at r equals to 1 plus sine 7 pi over 6. This equals to 1 minus 1 over 2. This equals 2, well, 2 over 2, like that. Uh, that's just 2 minus 1. That's just going to be 1 over 2. And likewise, r equals to 1 plus sine uh, 11 pi over 6. This equals 2, again, 1 minus 1 over 2. Same exact 1, because that's just, uh, the sign of that is just uh, negative 1 over 2. So this just becomes 1 over 2. So now the points are for the horizontal tangents are at uh, at r, which is 2. And then this is pi over 2. Yeah, pi over 2 like that. And then this is going to be uh, 1 over 2 and 7 pi over 6. And then the last point here is at 1 over 2 and 11 pi over 6, like that. Now the vertical tangents or so vertical tangents and these are at uh, now we have that 3 pi over 2 we've decided that's uh, vertical tangent that's at the pole at 3 pi over 2 and let's see the other ones so that's a 3 pi over 2 what are the other ones just a refresher so we have this one pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6 like that because those are uh, the derivative at the bottom dx over d theta is 0 so we have this as you have 5 pi over 6 and 7, no, excuse, no this is uh, yeah, just pi over 6, like that. I'll just rearrange this. So 5 pi over 6 and uh, pi over 6, like that. And now uh, the, uh, the r values or the distance from the pole in polar coordinates, that's going to be 1 plus of the uh, 1 plus sign. Let's go with 3 pi over 2. Yeah, remember the 3 pi over 2, that's just, uh, for the sine is just negative 1. So 1 minus 1, that equals to 0. And again, because the distance from the pole is 0, that's at the origin. And then the other point, r, 1 plus sine pi over 6, as I showed above, is just 1 over 2. So 1 plus 1 over 2, you get times 2 over 2, common denominator. So 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is just 3 over 2, like that. And likewise, the other part, r, 1 plus uh, 5, yeah, this is going to write sine, sine 5 pi over 6 equals 2, 1 plus 1 over 2, the same thing as above, 3 over 2, so the points are in polar coordinate form, points uh, 0 and 3 pi over 2, that's the origin, now we have at uh, 3 over 2 and pi over 6. And then we have at uh, 3 over 2 and 5 pi over 6, like that. Yeah, so thus what we end up having visually, so thus, let's just plot all these points together. What we end up having is a giant shape like this. And then let's just draw it as just a heart shape like this. I'll draw this a bit better. Okay, so here I just quickly have fixed that up. So now what we have is number of theta equals to zero at over here, and then the uh, vertical tangents are at here zero and three pi over two. That's at the origin all the way here, and uh, let's put this as zero and uh, three pi over two like that. And uh, at this point, it's still at the zero, zero mark. Yeah, and that's basically the origin. If you just go all the way there and come back, etc., you're just going to get end up over there. And then the point across here, this is the vertical tangent. That is actually at uh, this 3 over 2. It's the farthest distance is, is over here from the origin. This is 3 over 2 and pi, five, I mean pi over 6. This part here is going to be, again, 3 over 2 by sym symmetry. And this is going to be... 5 pi over 6, like that. And this is about, that's 30 degrees. And then the uh, horizontal tangents, that's at this 2 and two and pi over 2. That's just 90 degrees. That's at this flat line across 
there, that's 2, and uh, pi over 2, like that. I'll just uh, draw this a bit shorter. One more try, okay, like that. Yeah, this is pi over 2, and then the other points are at the 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6, and the distance are 1 over 2, and that's in fact over here at these two points, like that. And this is at, uh, let's write this as 1 over 2 and 7 pi over 6. And this is 1 over 2 at 11 pi over 6, like that. And also for completeness, remember from part 2 where I showed uh, the derivative at this point here, which was yeah, the, the derivative, or uh, this is m for slope, as equal to negative 1. This is at... Uh, Theta equals to yeah pi over three, and I'll just put an arrow like this. I mean a comma here. This is pi over three, and the value of this one that's just going to be r equals to one plus sine pi over three. And remember, uh, recall from part two that this just equals to three. Uh, I mean this the sine pi over three is just one plus. Um, this is going to be square root three over 2 like that and we just plug this in square root 3 over 2 and that's from my last video make sure to watch that and that's a point there where we have that negative 1 slope and yeah that is pretty much all for today I'll just scroll this up yeah I just scroll it up quickly like that and uh, yeah hopefully you learn from this pretty extensive example video and going through a lot of different mathematics like Lahapi tells rule limits etc. and trigonometry and also uh, to illustrate that sine of pi over 3 this value here by this is just uh, square root 3 so the sine of this is square root 3 over 2 and you could see that by using Pythagoras uh, 1 plus square root 3 uh, 1 squared plus square root 3 squared equals 2 well that's just gonna be uh, 1 plus here that's just gonna be 3 equals to 4 in other words this equals to 2 squared and that's just uh, Pythag. Here, quickly wrote that. So that's just Pythagorean theorem for completeness. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. It's a pretty uh, <laughs> extensive video. Hopefully, follow along. And uh, yeah, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And also, I'll be posting them to Steam it as well. So follow me at MES. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's the best social media uh, platform I've I've seen in in a while. Anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution.